it looked like Facebook was gonna hold and rip and then it just Hey everybody, I hope you had a great trading week. There is a ton to go over. So let's start here with just the cues. I wanna cover this in greater detail, so stay to the end, but we just need to talk about this so you can kind of understand where we're gonna go with some of these ideas. At the end of the video, I will go through this and how it's coordinated with the VIX how it's coordinated with the 10 year and what to look for going in the next week after we go through the idea so you can put it all together. But that said, you see this level right here, 318.51, we flipped through that. Now, with that said, we have flipped through this level, 309.88. We're gonna show you this on a 15 minute chart. You can see this head and shoulders pattern right here, right? Left shoulder, head, right shoulder, neckline, boom. See how it tries, breaks, tries. I was really looking for this to break, but we just never, we just never got there. We had this little reversal, a little hammer here, and then into the close. People just wanted to be uh, pretty much net on, on the end of the day. People just want to go the, through the weekend flat with what's been going on. But we'll cover this and the other indexes more at the end. But it just fits the kind of thesis that we're going to be talking about, longs and shorts. So I wanted to at least give you a general sense of where my head is. So Coinbase, we're going to start here. Now, Coinbase is coming out with earnings, so you're going to have to be very careful here. But to me, this is just an outright short. You have two days before earnings, so the goal would be to get up in the short, right? You want to get up in it before the earnings call and then see if there's a way to either one hedge it or scale out of it and then stay in for the call. Now, it's always helpful to go back and take a look at how we responded to other earnings. Gap down here, right? Gap down here, uh, ran up, gap down. So we're not really lighting the world on fire with earnings. Now, that said, we are predicting year over year decline in revenue. That coupled with slowing uh, trading in crypto. NFT trading is basically non-existent uh, compared to what we thought it was going to be. So that looks like it's going to take a long time. Now, you look at these on a much larger scale, this picture becomes a lot clearer on what's going on. So once we've broken down, we tried to hold, rally again, that didn't happen. Now we're just hitting lower lows. Look, when these new IPOs go public, the, as much as there's no resistance up front, there's no support below. Okay, this is Rivian. Okay, in my opinion, Rivian will not be in the same format as it was you know, six months from now to a year from now. I don't think Coinbase is around the same way, and I think we're seeing that as well with what we've already seen it with Hood, right? They're already coming out, raising their fees. Eventually, these companies may not be in the same format. Now, Coinbase is in a much different space, and they might be able to, to last, but what we would be looking for here is just simply to get in a short and stay in it. So if this breaks, you know, 125, so you're looking at 125 cents, if you break that level, I would start putting the short on and see if you can get into the 95s, 96 before before earnings and then find a way to hedge it. But I just can't see for the life of me, and I don't play earnings, I wanna see what happens. But if I can get in this and up in my short before earnings, this could really be something. This could be a complete meltdown. We already know revenues on the trading front are very, very light. And speaking of financial debacles, so we can see what's going on with Square pretty clearly. I can put in the other moving averages. It's kind of pointless. Uh, you know, we're we're below all of them. Th these are not really telling us anything, as you can see. So, kind of just in the way at this point. So, what I think is more important is just understanding the RSI. RSI determines the magnitude of the move, and you can kind of see what's going on here. But we came out with earnings. They were anything but spectacular. I'm not going to get into the specifics of earnings. Uh, anyone can read that for themselves. But you have this megaphone pattern. Out of this megaphone pattern, you're somewhat of a bear flag into this megaphone. Now, why is that important? It's important because it means that a large move is coming. Now, considering that we are in a stage four, right? So there's different stages to charts, but as you come down, there are different stages to charts, but as this comes down, uh, this is what a stage floor looks like. You just kind of keep coming down, you try to rally, you fail, they just wear you out. That's what you're dealing with there. So all we're gonna look for here is for this to break that level that I have right here, 93.12. Look for this to break 93.12 and then just start watching these little supports and seeing how they act. Uh, you know, That's what we're focused on here. So these are trades that we're looking at for the week. There'll be a couple in here that you could look at a little longer term. Please subscribe to the channel and click all notifications because what we go over here is timely. You don't wanna be watching Watching this three, four weeks from now. It's not as pertinent. Uh, the goal is to give you know actionable ideas that you can execute on and learn from. So if you break this, I think that going to 83 is pretty much a lock, right? You can see how that level fits perfectly right there. We need to get rid of one of these. That's what I would focus on. Okay. I would focus on this 83 as a target price. I think that's very realistic 
for this to get back to that level. It was not a good quarter. He had a little short covering, and that was the end of it. ZIM, now we'll all recognize this one from the huge dividend that they came out with last time. Everyone was very happy with that dividend, stock gaps down. People get rid of it now that they don't, you know, they got in for their ex-dividend, they get rid of it, lock it in, and they move on. Well, what we're seeing is earnings are coming out, they're coming out soon. We look like the 18th. So you're gonna wind up seeing this try to trade up. Now, there were a couple people in the trading room that bought this a little earlier, you know, they got ahead of it, which is good. I mean, this was your level to break. The first trade was 61.86. You can see how it's done nothing but trade up. And people are going to try and get ahead of this because they want to get as much umph as they can. I'm going to use the word umph because they want to be up and in it before earnings. Why? Because they know that by the time it goes ex-dividend, it's going to drop down again. No different than it did this time. But they want the, the dividend and they want the return. I would watch this long-legged doji right here and wait till you flip this 50 day. So that puts you at 67 and a quarter. If you can flip 67 and a quarter, you can get to some pretty easy levels here. This, th this is pretty much almost a lock to get to 7408 if you can flip this. And then you could start thinking about it, can you fill this gap beforehand, 79. And it's possible that this gets moving. Really, just focus on the fact that CIM benefits greatly out of uh, Southeast Asia. And if things start picking up again out of Shanghai, which I think they are going to have to, uh, this is definitely something that can benefit from that. AMR, this is one we've been playing uh, for a little bit now. And we played into um, the, what well, we waited for the earnings. Uh, we, we're in this in the newsletter from 166. If you do not subscribe to the newsletter, there is a free version uh, in the link below. Simply click the link in description uh, that says newsletter. And it's pretty much that simple. But what you, what we're looking for is I'm looking for this to flip. That's really what I want. I want this to flip. Why? Upper channels that flip, stocks can go parabolic. This particular trade in a breakaway market, which energy is in, uh, is just like, this is like one of those charts that always works out very well for me. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to break this and I wanted to break through that. So right now you're looking at 178.38. You can keep this on your radar. Coal stocks are not going anywhere but up until these sanctions are lifted. And that does not look like it's going to happen anytime soon. Become a little concerned if you break 164. And please comment on these videos. That's why I'm giving stops. So any way that you think I can make these videos better, please let me know because I find that extremely helpful. And that's what I'm trying to do, create content that you find is helpful. So what, what we're seeing here is we're seeing the opportunity to flip. Now, if you flip that, you're at 178.38, and you can see this push higher. Caveat, I have a position in this. I like it a lot. I really like the coal names. That whole space, I'm gonna just tell a dad joke, I guess, is on fire. Look at Arch. I mean, same thing, came back down, said, oh, we're gonna give a, a, a huge dividend. I think the dividend's $8, and the stock never looked back. It just keeps building that base right up here. So I think that this is definitely a space that you should be looking at. And AMR looks like the one that has the most potential right here. And even in a, in a very weak tape today, this just held in there. Now, NVIDIA sadly looks like we're going to run into a large issue here. And I drew these earlier, but let me just show you how I got there so that you can get this. So I'm going to remove this line and you're going to see me just grab this one and put it right here. So you see how that fits perfectly? So what we want to do is we always want to clone these lines. Why do we want to clone them? We want to clone them because they give us a angle, right? They give us you give you an angle, and that gives you a degree. Now that degree, see how it fits right in here? So that degree, you're in a channel. No matter how you look at it, you're in a downward channel or a falling wedge, however you want to define it. But what's important about this is that every time you've been breaking out, you're not, you're not really staying under that, are you? What we want to see is we want to see if we can actually break. So what you want to see is 179.91. I, I would not be looking at this on the long side right now. I'd be looking at this on the short side. Now we are holding and we held today. Uh, I have a short position that I started and I will add to it when we break here. This does not look like it's going to hold to me, quite frankly. This looks like short covering into the end of the day uh, after selling this morning. You know, we are due for a bounce after the carnage we went through the other day, but and we'll talk about that at the end of the video, uh, but we're not seeing it. Now I have 13 days before earning. I have a hard time believing that this is not gonna break. When you start looking at everything that's going on there between the 21, 200, I mean, I don't need to put the others in. The RSI is below. If you throw in the MACD and just look at the histogram, this is a disaster, right? We can't even rally up uh, and, and turn green. I mean, it's just, it's not good. And I think a lot of people, I was hoping people would get washed out and we'll talk about the VIX and why we're not washed out yet, but just look for this to break. If this breaks, this could sell down. I really like the company, but we have to trade what's going on. AMD is holding in there. Maybe it will hold in there, but we have to just be set for it not to. Just the same way that 
it looked like Facebook was gonna hold and rip and then it just rolled on us again, right? And what does that Facebook remind us of? Well, that kind of reminds us of this on really good earnings. Remember this had great earnings? Snap had excellent earnings and we thought it was gonna run up on those earnings and get above that 50 day and it did for like once or twice and then reverse, okay? So you can see that these patterns replicate themselves based upon where you are in the chart and that's what you're always trying to do. Find patterns that replicate and this one looks to be setting us up as well. And that's one that I'm looking at because of that, this particular pattern. Because once you break these, once you break these, it's, it's a long way down. And you can see that even with something like, look at the software names. Like look at, look at that. Once you break, you have a problem. So that's something to focus on. Now, where do I think NVIDIA can go to? Let me go to that before we go to Lockheed so that you have it. I, I don't think that you're going to get to 134 right away. Could you? Yes. But I, you have to watch the 179 level. And then you kind of have to look in here and see where you can see a spot. I see 162 is doable. And that can happen very fast. You could be there before earnings. And that's what you would try to do. Be in there before earnings and then move the stop up, right? Because if by moving the stop up, then you're protecting your capital. Lockheed Martin was one uh, that looked like it was a goner. It looks like it was done. And I'm not so sure that it is. So let's look at this wedge line. Let's get rid of all these horizontal lines. And note that the RSI is slipping 50. So we're heading into an area where the magnitude of the move, because that's what RSI is, right? RSI determines the magnitude of the move. I'm gonna link the RSI video at the end of this. I'd recommend that you watch it solely because this type of environment, you can absolutely crush it if you're using RSI, even on short-term trades. Uh, and I can give you some examples of that in a moment here. But see what's going on right here? You just wanna watch and make sure you flip that 21. If you flip the 21 here, you're gonna go. The exact number of the 21, and all I'm looking for is to get up to here, I'm looking for a trade. It's all I'm looking for. So 450, 451.12 is what we're looking for, 451.12. And then we're looking to see if we can get to that 470 level. So it's no doubt that I'm very interested in energy and we've been trading energy all year long. Uh, people will remember that you know, we were trading this one in one of these top 10 videos since 480. We're actually back in this one again. And uh, I, like the, I like the whole space, but for larger cap dividend yielding stocks, this one really fits the bill. And this particular pattern, I'm very attracted to. I like these three bar patterns and I like them when they keep stepping us up. What do I mean by stepping us up? Well, if you come here and you say, okay, well, this is the breakout. And then the next day we don't get there. Instead, we have a wick. Wicks are what? Price rejection. And then we have another wick, which is what? Price rejection. So everything that's going on and this is acting like a honey badger and doesn't care. All of a sudden now we're closing at a new year high. If we go out a month on a monthly chart, Look at this wedge line right here. There's very little reason that we're not gonna test this 109 level. So all we're looking for is just a, this is really just a slow burn kind of trade. But if you pop over that 96.54, 96.55 level, that's really what you're looking for here. And then you're looking for about 10 points. Slow mover, right? You have a huge base that's been going on for well over a year and a half, but that's what we wanna focus on up and in. Now, shop came out with earnings and they were disastrous to say the least. Uh, and they're talking about having some kind of monetary issues. I, I'm not so sure that I'm buying the monetary issue rumors yet uh, on the company, but what I am buying is I'm buying this chart um, and by buying it, meaning that it's pretty clear which way this chart is going. So these were all levels that we were looking at before. This is when we've been long and short. I went through this before months ago and you know, these take time to break down. They just wear you down. And you can see how we hit the 50 and broke. So all we're looking for here, all we're looking for is any rally back to this 409 level to put this on. If you don't get that and you want to try it, you can try it if it breaks out the low. The problem with that is you're so far off the line that it's going to be hard to stay in it on any kind of bounce. So really what we're looking for here is any kind of bounce to that 409 level. If we can get up there and bounce, which is possible, it does happen. I, I would look at putting a short on. This is your trend line, okay? This can go much, much lower. This could get cut in half again. If people told you when this was, you know, 1,700, 2,000, if they, well, where did we, we pop out at? We stopped out at what, 1,700? So if someone told you this could go to 1,000, you would have told them they were crazy. Now you're at 377 and it's not even been the whole year yet, right? You haven't even, it hasn't even been 12 months. So yes, it can happen, it can go lower. Nobody wants to own a tech company with declining year over year revenue, declining growth. That's just a fact. They just don't want to own it. So what they want to own is boring like this. They want to own Campbell's soup right now. They know people want soup. 
I mean, it's not, don't overcomplicate this right now. This is not rocket science, right? People are looking for consistent businesses that pay a dividend. Why? Because if you pay a dividend, you usually have a good balance sheet. If you have a good balance sheet, I don't have to worry about your earnings. I could put money to work participate in the market while I'm putting money to work, right? And then at the same time, I get a little bit of a yield on my income. So someone can buy this and then just go, okay, now this is the first level that we would look at when to get in is 49.12. So if this can pull back to that 49.12 level, take a look at it. If you can flip this, this 49.84, you could look at that level as well. Your first target, you're not looking for much for your first target. You're looking to get up to here, which is 52 and a quarter. But let's go look at this on the weekly and you can see that there is potential here. We've been higher before. We've been in the 60s before. You're breaking the downtrend, which you can probably already see without me putting it in. But let's put it in anyway. We're just going to give you a really decent one so you can kind of see where you're at. Right. See that downtrend. And then let's look at this one. That's a little more clear where the break was. Right. See how you bounced there, bounced up, trying, trying, trying. So it looks like we're setting up again to break another one. Now, if we break this, then you could see the $64. If not, your $52 target is what you're looking for. You're not looking for much out of this, but it's a safe, it's a very safe play with a very easy pattern. I mean, if you close under 49.12, get out because you're basically in the gap again and you don't want to write that down to 47 or even give it the chance. So it's less than a dollar's worth of risk to see if you can get up in it then move your stop to break even, right? I mean, there's the whole trade mapped out for you. So now, why is this in here? Well, this is in here and we're gonna talk about the 10-year uh, treasury and what's going on with mortgage rates. But this is in there because what we're seeing is we're seeing home builders, we're seeing them collapse. Now, people will look at this and say, well, it's already from 125 to 37. This is a 3X ETF. If they're not going up and the underlying securities are not going up, and the underlying securities in this are home builders and supply suppliers, your home depots, okay? These kinds of charts, these that are breaking down your lows, right? That's what's in here. See how all these are breaking down? See Toll Brothers. So this is a really macro kind of trade and it puts it all in once. And what we're looking for is we're looking for a short. And all we're looking for is if we're to take out that low. That's all I'm looking for. So you're looking for 33 and at 33.51. Now, that said, if you are fortunate enough to bounce back to that 50 day, you want to look at it there, just like they were fortunate a couple days ago to get back to that level. And when that bounces, that's when you want to put it on. If you don't get that, this 33.51 is another level. Where can it get to? This can go a lot lower. Okay. You have to understand when you're a 3X ETF, every day they're resetting you and the expense of the fund is driving you down. So even if these stocks go flat, this is losing money. Every single day, this is losing money. These stocks are flat. So it makes it a lot easier to short these than go long a bear ETF. This is my first target on it, $22, but I think there could be 10 points here very quickly, a lot quicker than people think. You have to realize what's going on there out there and what's driving all this. So you have the 10 year, okay? This is, again, this is new from the, the, uh, the newsletter. And again, there's a free version of it in the description, link in description. Uh, but we're at a, a 555 on the 30 year right now, okay? Some of the highest yields we've had in a long time. This is where we're at on the 10 year. As this rises, rates go up. As rates go up, people can afford less and less house. If you talk to your friends that are trying to buy a house right now, it's not going very well. They're being outbid by people with cash and now it's gonna get a lot harder. Now those people with cash are probably not gonna be as eager uh, as the housing market softens up. But what we're gonna focus on is just something as simplistic as watching this level on the monthly. Pay attention to this, because this is huge. Now, we have to close over it, but if we close over it, not just get over it, right? We can always get over things. It's not really that impressive to get over. What we wanna do is close over. And why am I showing you this? Because I wanna show you this so that you kinda of get this, because this is really something that it has it's kind of shocking to me, frankly, but it's true. So since back here, since 1981, we have not had a higher high, okay, on, on the 10 year. Since 1981 monthly chart, we have not had a higher high close after these pillars. And I think that's really important to understand. You might have like little micro ones, but these macro ones, now nothing even close, these massive ones. And if that happens here, 
and we rally, this could get really, really ugly. So you have to watch the 10 year, not because you wanna sell 10 year bonds or you wanna discuss the 10 years with your buddies, but because this is gonna directly affect the real estate market, which is the single largest asset market in the world. Nothing is even close to it. Then it's the bond market, then it's the stock market. So just keep that in mind. It's really pivotal to understand that. All the cracks may start with the discounting mechanism of the stock market, but you need to watch what's going on with real estate because that tells you everything you need to know. Two takeaways from this. One, the fact that we're selling down as the market kind of went down today, right? We, we traded sideways, we'll take the minus 1%, but on the Qs, but what we really wanna focus on is we sold down today on the Option X because they closed options right so people sold puts now they're going to put them back on and they'll put them back on on monday tuesday we need a real real number here and this is not a, a real number uh, we need some some type of capitulation where there's a panic of some kind similar to what we saw back here in june 2020 right similar to what you saw here you need a reading at my in my estimation you need a reading over 40 to at least put in a short-term bottom and we're not getting one so Pay attention to the VIX and don't think that you're anywhere near putting in a short-term bottom until you have a reading of 40 or higher. And the last time that we had anything like that, I mean, you want an extreme reading now because the market is starting to act somewhat extreme. And if you don't see that, then you need to understand you know, the, the nuances and what's going on. But look at that 39 rating and you can see how that affected the market. And if you went through those lows and you mark these dates, like February 24th, and you go back and kind of take a look at where the VIX is and what they mean, right? Here's February 24th, so you can see why that date would be important. So focus on that. You wanna see extreme moves. Now, in regards to the index, there's nothing redeeming about this at all, nothing. So you held here, tried to break, couldn't break. We formed a long-legged doji, which simply means indecision. I'm glad we held, and the reason for holding is this. Okay, energy. So I can't stress this enough. Why everyone's saying there's nothing to buy out there? Energy. Focus on energy. The energy trade will unravel when one of two things happen. One, sanctions are lifted. Two, global energy policy changes globally. Until those, energy's not going anywhere. So it was interesting. I was listening to a gentleman today um, on social media talking about, you know, when is this going to come down? You're not understanding the trade. The last time that energy acted this way goes back to crude. And I think that you have to take a look at crude oil for a moment to understand this, to really grasp what's going on. So see these little spikes in crude? So see these little spikes in crude here and here? Okay. They happen every once in a while, right? And it gets crazy. Now you could work this off. Now this is on the monthly, higher close, higher close. So this is going to keep working its way up, right? Why am I showing you this? Because understand that when you're in a rising rate environment, which we are in a rising rate environment, right? So when we are in a rising rate environment, rates are rising, we're fully aware of that. You need to be really careful on buying anything that's not commodity. And the reason is because these physical assets go up in value. Now, let's go back to 1980. See this level right here? When the bond market broke out, we cleared a major higher high right here. This is as far back as it'll let me go. But what I want you to focus on, you see this big move? So this is the last time that CPI was higher than the 10-year bond, which is exactly what's going on here. CPI is higher than the 10-year bond. The consumer price index, which is inflation, is higher than a 10-year bond. What does that mean? It means you can't buy a 10-year bond right now and not lose money, right? You're losing money by buying a 10-year bond right now. This has only happened one other time in the past 40-something years, and it happened back here in 1980. If you take a look at what goes on with oil and energy during that period of time, Okay. you'll be very surprised to see how these stocks have acted and how high they could actually go. Now, obviously, this company will go, you know, you're going to look back in the 70s and you'll see this little blip here and it'll look like nothing, right? From, from start to finish, you're looking over about a year and you're looking at, at about 70% move. So to think that these are over and to think that this move is done, I, I don't believe that you're anywhere near done. And I would not be looking at something saying it's higher and how much higher can it go? That there, if you're asking yourself that question, you're asking the wrong questions. So just understand that, understand where energy can get to and it can go a lot higher. Keep that in mind and that's where your focus should be. As always, any questions, please reach out. Please like the video, it helps support the channel. Uh, if you need anything, just comment below or you can always email me at arate at arate trading.net. Trade to win everyone.